Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to start making some API calls using Node.js. Now, there are a variety of different ways to make API calls within JavaScript. The reason for this is because all you have to do to make an API call is just to send an HTTP request. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this. You could use Ajax, you could use jQuery, you could use some NPM packages, um, like there's request is a good one. Um, NPM request is probably the most popular. However, request has been deprecated because it basically there's no longer a need for it. So what we're going to use is we're going to use fetch. Fetch has been added into vanilla JavaScript and it's pretty straightforward. So instead of bloating our projects with jQuery or um, Axios or a variety of other um, HTTP request clients, we're just going to use the built-in fetch. The way that fetch works, and here's the, here's the documentation if you want to look into it, um, you can Google that on the MDM web docs. So there's a bunch of stuff about fetch. But basically, I'll just kind of give you a rundown on the way that fetch works. Basically, fetch, you give it a URL to that it's going to request some data from, and that just depends on whatever um, whatever API you're using. So this could be reddit.com slash r slash soccer um, dot json. So whatever um, URL is going to return you some data, you, you put that in there, you fetch in there, and then it returns what's called a promise. A promise. P-R-O-M-I-S-E. Now, unfortunately, we don't have time to really get into promises. Um, they're, they're a little bit more advanced concept in JavaScript that confuses a lot of people, and honestly, we simply don't have time to really go in-depth in them. With that being said, they are an important concept to learn for modern JavaScript, and I highly, highly recommend you look into them when you can. Unfortunately, just due to the time constraints of this course, we don't have time to really delve into them. The syntax for fetch is just like it is here. Fetch, called as a function with whatever um, URL you want to fetch from, dot then, and then what a uh, callback function, whatever you want to do. Dot then, callback function, whatever you want to do, and you can do that as many times as you want. Dot then, dot then, dot then, dot then, dot then. Then finally, dot catch. And dot catch will have another callback function in there, and what that does is anytime you have an error. So let's go ahead, instead of just looking at the docs, let's build our own. So inside of APIs, I'm going to touch, um, and we'll just call this, I don't know, um, myRequest.js. So now I have this JavaScript file. And let's first, before we actually do anything with it, let's look at that syntax again. Fetch, and then whatever your URL is, fetch URL in there dot then then you have your callback function and data is going to be passed to your callback function and then you put your whatever you're going to do in there and then if you have something else you want to do dot then and you have another callback function and you can do that that dot then as many times as you want and then finally you have a dot catch and inside of here, you have an error that will be passed, and .catch is, is used whenever there's a problem with the, with the fetch. So the way that this works is it runs asynchronously. In other words, it does not run this data, all of these at the same time. The way that it works is that it will fetch the URL. Once it gets a response, it'll do this dot then. It will do everything in here. Once this is done running, it'll do this one. Once this is done running, it'll do the next one. Once that's done running, it'll do the next one all the way down the block. It will not run dot catch unless there is an error getting in getting your um, URL. If there is an error, if your API res, um, responds with an error, it will skip all these dot thens and only run the dot catch. It is important to note, and I said it and I'm going to say it again, these run in order. This one will run until it's done, then this will run, then this one will run, then this one will run. They will not run at the same time. This is super useful because whenever you're making a request to an API, there is a time delay. There is some lag in there depending on how long it takes the, that server to get your data and return it to you. This could be just nanoseconds or milliseconds. It could be a couple seconds. Um, so, and you're never going to know. And it's going to be different each time it's run. It's going to be different depending on how their server load and how far you, it is from your computer to their server. This is going to be different. 
So if you start to try and use this data before you've received the response, you're going to get an error because that data is undefined. That's why these dot thens are so important because it will wait to run this. Your program will not run this first one until you receive this data back. That way you can guarantee 100% certainty that you have received this data. Either you will get the data back without an error, without a problem, and you'll be able to use it and run it, or you will get an error back, and then this will run based on that error. And the way that these dot thens work is that in this callback function, you have to return something. Whatever is returned will be passed into the next one. So for example, if I have the data here, and let's say that I just wanted to capitalize the data, data dot to upper case. Now if I did this, nothing would be passed into this string. I would have to return data dot to uppercase. And then here, now I have data again, or I could call this uppercased data or whatever, and I could do something else with this data, and I could return whatever else data dot split and split on commas or whatever. Whatever I'm doing with the data, this is going to run. It's going to make it all uppercase. Then this one will run and split it on commas, and then I can do something else, then I can do something else. The important part is that I'm returning that, because if I don't return it, then this will be run with undefined, and I, will, I won't be able to do anything with the data. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and make some requests. The first one, I'm just going to request just basic Google. Okay, so my fetch is going to be https colon slash slash www.google.com. All I'm going to do is get basic Google. All I'm going to do is get this stuff. View the page source. I'm just going to get this right here is what I'm going to receive back from this fetch, fetch request. So I'm fetching this dot then and then you can call this data, you can call it response, you can call it whatever you want. Um, I like to call it response. Then response, and all I'm going to do is just console.log that response. Dot catch, because if I have an error, I want to make sure and catch that error. And the convention is just ERR. That's not required. That's just what most people do. And if I, there's an error, I'm just going to console.log the error. Now this is very simple, very straightforward. Now let's run that. Node my request.js. And we're getting an error. Fetch is not defined. This is expected. The reason for this is because fetch is not implemented in Node yet. It is implemented in vanilla JavaScript, but it is not implemented in Node yet. Therefore, we need to get an npm package. So let's do npm i, and the package we're going to get is called node-fetch. So it'll take it a second to install. There it's done. So step one is to import it. Const, and I'm going to call it fetch. The reason I'm calling it fetch is because I want to use a vanilla JavaScript name. I could call this node fetch or whatever I want, but I want to keep it simple. Node fetch equals require node fetch. So now let's try running this again. Node my request. Boom. So we got a bunch of stuff back. We got a body with a writable state, with some writable stuff, allow f open, all kinds of different stuff. Here's the URL, the status is 200, status text is okay, so we, we got a response. We got a good response with the information in there. But the catch with this is that it's not really in a, in a format that we can understand. So after, um, after we make the fetch, we need to format the data before we um, log it. So we're going to add another dot then first, then response, and inside of here we're going to put the data formatting steps. So what we're going to do is we're going to return, because remember you have to return something, return response dot text, and this will convert our response into text. So let's save and try again. 
So we see we got a response back, and now we, we see there's some functions in there. So there's obviously some JavaScript, document.body. So this is all stuff that it's ugly as anything, but we can tell this is indeed an HTML document. This is what we were looking for. See, doc type, HTML, HTML, item scope, item type. So you can see that it's, it's, it's the, the HTML document that we were expecting. This is what we got. So now I want to show you real quick this error, this catch, because right now we got a good response. So instead of that, let's go to uh, just this random URL with a bunch of gibberish in there. Make that request. Now we got an error. Fetch error request to here, failed. Reason, it's not found. So you can't, you can't find that. So the messages request to here failed, reason not found. So we got our error. So we did not return these. Instead, it got an error, so it skipped those and returned this. One thing to note is that this does not actually throw an error in our JavaScript. It doesn't stop the JavaScript from running or anything like that. It simply returns an error right here to this catch. So it runs this, and all we're doing is console.log. So if we put something here afterwards, so let's just console.log, here I am, and run this again. If this actually threw an error, it would stop running here. It would not show this here I am. But there we go. Here I am. We got that. Now, some of you may question, well, why is here I am at the top when down here it's at the bottom? That's that whole asynchronous nature right here, because what's happening is, is we're importing fetch, then we're making this call. While this call is being made and it's waiting on the response, it continues running the script, so it jumps down here to, to here I am. And then as soon as we get this response, it runs the, the rest of it. That's one of the things to keep in mind whenever you're using fetch and other asynchronous JavaScript is that it is asynchronous. It doesn't run in order. It will try. It will do this and it will wait on a response. So we got the fetch. We're importing. We're making this call. While we're waiting on that call, we continue on to the next thing. Here I am. And then we get the call back, so it kind of goes back and runs all this code. So let's look at some JSON, because right now all we're getting is just an HTML document back. Get rid of this. Let's make a call to some JSON. Let's make a call to um, HTTP colon slash slash JSON placeholder dot type of code dot com slash users. Now just so you can see what the data is actually going to look like, we can just copy and paste that in there. Here's the raw data. And this is what it looks like. I like to use the JSON here because it's pretty. Just going to give us back an array of users. So we have our first user, our second user, so on and so forth. Those users have IDs, names, usernames, emails, we got an address, they got geolocation, phone and website company. This is all fake data. This is all this is. It's just some fake data that gives you um, user data to play around with. So we're going to make that request and then we are returning response.txt, console.log response, console.log error. Let's do this and see if it works. Boom, look at there. Works perfectly, or so it seems. Let's try and access the first item, this, this Leanne Graham. Let's try and get her, her name. Let's say that our application needed some user data and we were just getting this name. Or maybe we're making, I don't know, some a contact list or something, I don't know. But let's say we needed her name. So looking in the JSON, that's gonna be the response, the zeroth um, item, and then it's going to be name inside of that. So instead of just console.log and response, we want console.log response zero dot name. Because response is an array, so we're getting the first item on that array, and then we're getting the dot name property on that item. So zero dot name. This should work, or so it would seem, but it's not going to. Undefined. Right now, response zero dot name is undefined. The reason for that is as I hinted at in a previous video. This is just JSON, and JSON is just text. We can't use bracket notation, we can't use dot notation with text. So instead of up here, where it's dot text, we need to do dot JSON. Save, run, and now it works fine. By using dot JSON, we convert from 
JSON into an actual JavaScript object. And then once we have that actual JavaScript object, we are returning it to this function, which is then console.logging response first item dot name. In this video, we did several things. First, we learned about the fetch um, API inside of vanilla JavaScript that came in with ES6. I believe it's ES6. It might be um, another ES version, but I believe it's ES6. It allows us to make HTTP requests. This works fine in most browsers, but it's not implemented natively inside of Node.js. So we had to import the node fetch npm module. We had to download and install that and then import it. We imported it into our application using the name fetch. The reason that name is important is because that's the, how you would do it in vanilla JavaScript. So it just makes your life easier and anyone who's reading your code's life easier if you use that. You could theoretically use something else, but don't. We learned that fetch returns a promise and promises we didn't really get into, but basically it's an object that represents something that's gonna happen or is happening. We made an initial fetch to um, different various URLs, first to Google and then to this JSON API. Then we chain on these different then calls, and these are called in order based on whatever is returned from the previous one. So this fetch returns the data it gets, dot then does something with the data. In this case, it converts it to a JavaScript object and returns that. This dot then takes that returned value and console.logs information off of it. And then the dot catch is there in case we get an error on the fetch. Whenever we try and fetch something, if it throws an error, then that will be this code will be run. And dot catch allows us to gracefully handle errors. It allows us to not break our code whenever we get an error as a response from this fetch. Instead, it just kind of logs the error or we can do other things with that and show stuff to the user, but that's for a further video. And we converted that response to either JSON or text, depending on what we were wanting to do. There are other options, but those are the two you're gonna see 99% of the time. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.